sustainable system, a life system that uh, provides a way for humanity to be able to manufacture what it needs for every single living being on this planet. So what we do is we have educationals, we uh, bring people into our organization. You don't have to even be a member. You can be a part of a committee. And committees um, are set up to basically uh, engage on the front of struggle. So if you're involved in the water struggle, we may have a committee for that. If you're involved in the healthcare struggle, we have a committee for that. Uh, there's a retiree committee. Um, the committee that I come from is the Youth and Education Committee. And then from that committee, we also have a media committee who deals with the media justice struggle because we know that basically the capitalists have a propaganda apparatus. And that's the entire media structure that we have today, the corporate media. And at Fox News, I mean, CNN, all of them, throw them in the bag because they all occupy the same space in my, in my estimation. Because what they're trying to do is preserve the system of private property and capitalism, and, and, and they don't want to see what we're really talking about. And so people who are involved in media, people who are journalists, understand that struggle and how hard it is to get stories produced about real issues that confront the system, that say, you know what, this isn't right, not because of the, you know, this is an injustice to black people or an injustice to poor people or an injustice to women or, or, or gays or lesbians. This is an injustice to humanity. And it's an injustice on the basis of this system is so rife with exploitation that it strips us of everything. It strips all of us of everything, and it's got to change. But that truth is not able to get out because we don't have that you know, big media apparatus. We don't have that big sounding board to say, oh, you know, buy this shiny new car or buy this or buy that because this is the cool thing to do. And that's a powerful instrument where you can put an image on the screen and say, this is what's hot. This is what's cool. And you get it pounding to your head over and over and over again that this is what you need to do. It's like a social programming that's taking place. Well, it's time for us to get deprogrammed and to get reformatted with the new program and for us to be able to speak to each other in a new language, a language of cooperation, a language of community, a language of revolution. And Learn is here to do that. We have a publication that we are connected to. Um, this is not a, a Learner publication, but the People's Tribute. Um, a, a lot of members of Learner contribute to the People's Tribute. And I'm sure some of you have seen it and read the articles and seen the type of truth that gets put out. And that's really what we're all about. We're about telling the truth so that we can come up with solutions, so that we can inform our class that this is class warfare, as Warren Buffett so eloquently put it. And he said his class is winning. How about that? <laughs> well, I'll be damned if his class wins because we've got the heart, we've got the spirit, We've got the intellect, we've got the mind, we've got the wherewithal, we've got the struggle, we've got the fight, the battle, the everything that we need to take this thing over. But the thing that we need most at this point in history is the direction. And Learner is here to provide that, not saying that we know what to do, we know all the answers, come to us. No, we're saying we'll come to you. Where are you struggling at? Where are you fighting at? What are you battling on? We'll help you with that. We, we, we see that, that that needs to be fought for. But understand that the fight doesn't just stop at that one particular issue. We got to keep going until we take over these corporations. And so that's why Learning exists. We are a propaganda organization that says we need to spread the word and create a class unity so that we can wage true class warfare. Because that's what we're involved in at this point. We're not involved in just a, 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 a struggle on a particular topic. All of these struggles are connected. And so now it's time for us to connect and time for us to build. And so if there's anybody at this point, we've got about 10 minutes, um, that wants to ask questions about who we are, what we do, um, where you can get connected with us, and, you know, just, or even want to share a testimony about, you know, what your struggle is involved with, and, and maybe there's something that we could, you know, lend to you in terms of, of, of support or make a connection somewhere and help you guys build so that we can keep this thing moving forward. Yeah. <laughs> yes, sir. Um, why America and just America? Why not the world? 
Well, there's a saying that you always start in your own household. You always start in your own backyard. And so, me being a Detroiter, I'm going to start in Detroit. And so, and not to say that you shouldn't be connected with the global community, that the global community does not need to know what's going on here, we don't need to know what's going on there, but why not start right here? And so, what we're saying is, if we can take over American capitalism, meaning that we can transform this from a capitalist state to a socialist communist state, what do you think, where do you think the chips will fall after that, globally? You know what I'm saying? Because once you take down Babylon, then, all right, where do we go from there? We can take over the rest of the world. And that will, I think, empower revolutionaries around the world to see, they got that done? Really? For real? Wow, okay, let's go. And I think that we're, we're not disconnected when we do that. I think that we're just taking care of our front of struggle. And I think that we'll, all of these battles are connected globally. And, and, and through some of the work that I've done, you really get to see how similar our lives are you know, to people you know, in South Africa, to people in Asia, Southeast Asia, uh, Latin America. I got a chance to, to go to El Salvador, and, and that was just a beautiful experience to see how connected they were um, to their history of struggle. And uh, Latin America is just a cool place for anybody that, that hasn't been. I mean, their revolutionary struggles are really rich. Um, not just in, in Cuba with, with Che and, and, and Fidel, but all over that region. But yeah, I, I mean, so let's start here. Because if, if we get it done here, then we can take this thing all around the globe. And people will be strengthened by that, people will be empowered by that. Um, they will, like I said, there will be a, a two-way flow. They'll be able to help us, we'll be able to help them. But like I said, we gotta start somewhere. We gotta start in our own backyard. And, and, and always have a target. I say sometimes, what we, we fall into as, as revolutionaries, we've got this vision of what we want. And I think that without vision, you can't move anything forward. And so we get stuck on this vision and we say, okay, this is what we want the thing to look like. And it looks pretty good to us in this vision, but there are steps and there's a line of march. And we can't skip any of those steps to get to our vision. And so it's just about being thorough, it's about being strategic and scientific and understanding, okay, so this is part A, and this is part B. And then once we get done with part B, we'll go to part C. And then once C is done, then we can go to D. And then once we get to D, oh man, well, we'll get the rest of the alphabet figured out. And so we have to move with some level of strategy, because the other side definitely has a strategy. They have a strategy for our destruction. They have a strategy for complete control. Not just this um, superficial control that they have at the moment, because you know they think they're winning, but really they're not. And it's because of their own success. How about that? It's the <laughs> fact that capitalism has advanced so far and has made the tools to where we can produce for everybody, and that's a good thing. But it's being so misused and abused because of the system being built on exploitation. And so when we remove that system and place a new one that's built on cooperation, on sharing a shared property as opposed to private property. And I'm not talking about personal property, your clothes or you know, your toothbrush or anything like that. You know, that, that, that's crazy. But when I say property, I mean the ability to get the stuff out of the ground and into people's hands when they need it. And when we can get that on a communal level as opposed to this private system that uses this monetary system that all it is is just trade and debt. I mean, the zeitgeist folks, that's the one thing I really love about you guys' presentation is you guys understand this system at so many levels and are doing a good job in terms of informing and educating people about how it functions and operates in each layer of exploitation that takes place. So you don't have to know that you're just getting slapped in the face with a right hand, you got a left, and a couple more you know, getting, coming from behind you. We're getting slapped up all around here. And so we have to say we're, we're not taking the abuse anymore. And we don't want our children to have to suffer these abuses. And this planet, oh my goodness, oh my goodness. This planet, like we're, okay, so when I watched the Jetsons when I was growing up, I used to always envision this like really, really cool world where like you can go to different planets. We'd be flying around, like these gas cars, like seriously.